Hello everyone, this is Fantasy Esk and welcome back to the Sims 4 Vampire Amazon Royal Saga with the Salazar Coven. We are picking up in the Queen's Chambers with her newest mate, the Visitant Prince Voldemort Karamazov, who has been in the House of Lords living a secluded existence with the remnants of his Visitant Army after his defeat in the previous generation by Eden's mother, Queen Aphrodite Salazar. So what happened in the mini-movie? Basically, we started off with our queen and her counselors. She had a proposition for them and she just wanted them to hear her out. Um, and she said that it's been an age since we had the Visitant War. I feel that now is a good time for us to start including the visitants among our mates. And so Lagatha, she was saying, are you proposing, you know, to be the first to breed with the visitant? And Guinevere understood very quickly what was going on and she jumped in to say yes and I absolutely support this idea because Guinevere is attracted to power and strength and for her the visitants were quite fascinating I mean, to a lot of our young ladies, they were fascinating in the previous generation because of how different they looked, but also because of how strong and powerful they were compared to the soldiers we had. Um, and plus, Voldemort, he is a prince, so Guinevere, she feels as though the pairing between, um, you know, their own royalty and a foreign royalty is going to be something that makes the next generation stronger, right? And the visitants definitely have you know, probably strong attributes that they want to pass on to their children. Now also, Guinevere, like in some situations, I suppose, a person like Guinevere would find this to be a bit of a threat. Like, you're going to have stronger children than I am. But with the way Guinevere's been acting, especially on Kyra, I feel like in Visitant's mind, not Visitant, what am I saying? In Guinevere's mind, jeez. <laughs> in Guinevere's mind, she and Eden are not so separate. So if Eden is doing a breeding with someone, or if Eden is being paired with someone, 
Guinevere almost considers that offspring to be hers, like she considers that offspring to belong to her. So Eden being able to mother her children is something that Guinevere feels she allows Eden to do by protecting Eden and maintaining her life, right? So she wouldn't be that alarmed or affronted by this pairing. She would be in support of it. So we had that. And then in the next scene, Voldemort was brought in. He introduced himself to the queen. I mean, everyone knows his identity, obviously. He was the one who led the flippin' war in the previous generation. But he said, greetings, your majesty. And then he said, it has been an age uh, since I laid, or I haven't laid eyes upon you since the visitant war. And then he went on to say that you have grown into a fine woman, it seems. So he presented himself a breeding with his whole name and title. And then the queen, um, uh, but, but what did she even say to him? It, it's escaping me. It's escaping me. But essentially, she was quite pleased to get this whole thing going. And so was Voldemort. Oh, yeah, I think she said, um, I remember you from the battlefield. I couldn't keep my eyes away. And he said, tonight you will not have to. Because, you know, I think she was, she was supposed to be fighting um, someone else, one of the other captains probably. Um, she and Guinevere were assigned to fight, I think, one of the other captains, whereas, or maybe not even the captains, one of the other soldiers. And um, Aphrodite is the one who actually fought Voldemort, but because of how striking his appearance is, um, the princesses, you know, the youngsters, a lot of them, they could not look away from him. So finally, she gets to take him on as a mate. Um, and then we jump to them together in her chambers, and... They were getting intimate, like, very quickly, and she said, I've never bred with a prince before. Um, you're not as subservient as the others. And then Voldemort here, he was saying, your mother conquered me once, now I shall conquer you. So for him, this is, this is, this is like, not revenge exactly, but it's like, it's trying to get back some of his, honor and dignity, I suppose, of being defeated in the war, right? He is viewing this not as him kind of um, giving himself to the queen. He is considering this as him conquering the queen, right? He couldn't win the fight, but he's winning in other ways, right? He's making sure that his offspring flourish in this new land. So there we go. That's kind of what we saw between these two. And uh, I'm very excited for this pairing because look at his skin. He has got beautiful, beautiful skin. And I seriously hope we get a baby girl with that skin tone. That'll be amazing. Now, another thing is the visitants, they do have horns. Now, the horns will not pass on to any female offspring, but if um, there are male offspring, then the male offspring are going to have horns. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. Also, Voldemort has different eyes than the vampires that, you know, we know within the Empire. He's got these kind of purplish eyes. So the way that it will translate to the offspring is going to be a bit different. So if they have a princess between the two of them, then she will actually have periwinkle eyes and she will have um, silver hair. So silver hair and periwinkle eyes. Now the reason for that is because the visitants, they have I think four different eye colors which I have tried to correspond to our vampiric eyes. Um, so we've got purple on Voldemort, the captains have pink, then we've got yellow and blue. So obviously, yellow and blue are going to translate easily to the same colors. But then the purple and pink make things a little bit difficult because we don't actually have a pink with our vampires. We have red and purple and periwinkle. So what I've done is I've shifted Voldemort's purple eyes, like I've translated that to a periwinkle, 
And then with the captain's pink eyes, that's been translated to a purple. So that's kind of what's going on. I mean, I suppose I could shift it. We could do, um, we could give Voldemort's, um, if he has a daughter, we could give his daughter purple eyes and then maybe the captains, if they have a bread, maybe their offspring would have red eyes. But I feel like that's a bit of a, a bit of a switch. So I think I'm keeping it the way I'm keeping it. So if these guys have a princess, she will have periwinkle eyes. And she will also have the silver hair. So okay, that is that. But this is this is Voldemort. We have seen him in the previous generation. We are seeing him again. We know how he looks. He is quite good looking. Um, so I'm very, very excited to see the mix between him and our queen. So okay, let's go ahead and uh, first kiss. Let's dive into the first kiss. Let's go, Queenie. Let's go. He's got his crown and everything. His princely crown. He's got it with him. This is like the first time we've ever had any of our queens breed with royalty from another race or yeah, from from another race. That's that's kind of cool. So I'm kind of excited about this pairing. I really 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 hope it's a girl. We've had I think seven boys so far. I mean, come on, we've got seven boys. I feel like we deserve a girl at this point. We deserve a princess. And I mean, the queen has the best chance of having a princess. She's she's had two. She's the only one who's had any girls. So she probably has more luck than anyone else at this point when it comes to things like this. So, okay, you two. Let's get going. And then Saran is casually just going to be overseeing overseeing the meeting. Well, Serana, that's a little bit awkward, if I do say so myself. She's like not even bothered. She's over here just casually playing chess. Honey, I don't think this is entirely appropriate. She does not care. She's like, I have been through this like three times already. Nothing phases me at this point. Plus, I'm the physician. I'm supposed to be looking out for the health and well-being of all our vampires. So, fair enough. Maybe, you know, they've got two royal members in the coffin over here, so she feels as though it's especially essential that she's here. Well, that's fine. If that is as she wishes. But essentially, in, in the beginning, I think in Voldemort's mind, um, he's kind of surprised that Eden waited so long to call him in. But for her... In the beginning, if we remember, the visit in war was still fresh in everyone's mind. And so the queen and Guinevere especially, they didn't want to breed anyone to the the enemies, essentially. And they didn't want people to get upset and rebel. So they kind of bred instead with all the soldiers that fought in the visit in war. And then once, you know, they, like, a, a lot of time has gone by. Kyra and Juno's fathers are war heroes. They've kind of grown up into teens at this point. So a lot of people's attentions are on them. They're being celebrated. So people are, like, their anger has died down a lot. So the queen feels as though now is the time to kind of put forth their agenda that they've been wanting for a while, which is to breed the visitants into their family, right? So, okay, let's go ahead and uh, take a test, see if that was a successful breeding. Let's go ahead and check. Come on, Queenie. Let's go and check. Look at these two being all affectionate. Let's go and check. Let us go and check. Do we have a successful fifth breeding? So this is the Queen's fifth pregnancy. Let's see. Good news. Do we have good news? Um, we do or we don't? Excuse me. What's going on? Oh, eating for two. That was such a delayed reaction. Oh my goodness. She sat down here and then she got that reaction. 
Well, geez, thank you. Thank you. Right, so let's go ahead and set her due date. So one, two, three. Right? Yeah. So the throne jubilation, she's going to be having her baby on the throne jubilation the same day as that. Okay. Uh, the queen will host these guys. We'll invite over Prince Voldemort, of course. We'll invite over Elaine. She's scholar now. And our castle keeper, Lady Catalea. Uh, Catherine, of course. And then Kyra. We'll invite over Juno. Who else do I want to invite over? Guinevere is already going to be there, I think. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Any of the princes, perhaps? Let's invite over Myron. I mean, it's not such a big deal to invite Myron, I feel like. There's a commander. Okay, we'll invite the princes then. So Prince Rusty, Prince Daryl. And then let's invite, we don't have any female, <laughs> I was like, hmm, where's the female youngsters? And then I realized we don't have them. Okay, Griffin and Sage, we'll invite them. And then Leon, yeah, that'll do. Actually, Channing, Channing, Channing will invite you as well, my boy. I can't believe I almost forgot about you. Okay, I think that is good. I don't think we need any more. Okay, and then Eden's Court, and it'll be at 11 p.m. 11 p.m. Okay, well, look at that. 11 p.m. It is going to be a nighttime birth. We've been having a lot of morning births, so that's kind of interesting. Okay, well, has she let Voldemort know? Share the big news with him. Let him know that you guys were successful. Um, yeah, we're going to share the big news with him to let him know that she has successfully conceived. Hopefully a princess between the two of them. And then we shall go and bring both the princesses back into the castle. And the reason for that is I want to spend a little bit more time on their training. Actually, actually, before I bring the princesses back, there's something else I need to do. I suppose I could still bring them back. I'll see, I'll see. Okay, we've told Voldemort. That's great. He can go back to the um, House of Lords. Now, the things that I have to do, I'm going to keep... Guinevere and Lagatha here. I'm going to move the princesses back so that we can focus on their training. But before that, um, one of my lovely channel members requested a potion. So Yuna Suzu requested a potion for the month of May. And they wanted me to use the potion of Mastful Insults on Lady Lagatha, our broodmother. So I need to make some preparations and get that potion ready because I don't have that potion on hand in our stores. Um, either get it prepared or purchase it. I'll have to figure something out with Serana. And then once that's done, we can kind of continue with that. So I'll see you guys in a bit. I was so occupied with trying to get that potion of masterful insults, I completely forgot we had the council reappointment today. So all of the ladies have been signed back to the castle, the queen is on her throne, um, so that we can see whether or not the queen is going to renew her members in their positions at the council, Lady Guinevere and Lady Lagatha, or if she is going to change who she wants at her side. Now just at the beginning of this episode she took their counsel regarding this whole visitant mating thing and you know for the most part they were on her side. I think Lagatha was a little bit hesitant but then when Guinevere jumped on board she kind of supported Guinevere and um, 
agreed with the queen that yes, you should probably bring like bring the visitants into um, your your breedings now. So we had that going. Now we want to see who the queen is going to keep at her side. Um, I feel like this is kind of a, a huge step in the reign, or it's a bit of a shift because this is. Like the first, um, this is the fifth pregnancy she's having, but the first pregnancy where the child has a visitant father. So I feel as though the council members she has with her now are going to help basically ease things in that direction, or they're going to be a bit resistant maybe to the idea. So who who is she going to pick? So let's take a look at her relationships and see who is going to be her first council member. Let's see, and I think since like the last time, obviously Meredith has died, so some relationships might have changed. We're going to go into households, and it seems as though Lagatha is the closest to her right now, so Lagatha is going to be called up as the Queen's first council member. She was the Queen's second council member last time around, but she's going to be called up. Like the darling. There we go. As the Queen's first council member. And then if we take a look at the Queen's relationships, Guinevere has actually managed to maintain a good relationship with her sister. So she's going to be called up as the Queen's second council member. Which means that these two are keeping their positions by the Queen's side. And I think that is a smart move on the Queen's part because they supported her with the pregnancy. So obviously, if her views are changing a bit or going in that direction, she's going to want people who are on her side, um, as opposed to people who might be a little bit more uh, worried or hesitant about that idea. Now, also, her relationship with Catherine is flourishing. So I was kind of surprised that uh, Catherine didn't take one of these spots, but despite their romance, the Queen still trusts Lagatha and Guinevere more than the person she's being romantic with. Now this is going to be Catalea's first, you know, council reappointment that she's attending and she's going to be learning a whole bunch of things, especially the fact that even if she's a castle keeper, if she works hard at befriending the queen, she kind of stands a chance at maybe making it to one of those seats and having more say in what happens in the in the kingdom or helping the queen make decisions and that could actually help her out with the demon faction because that's what they want right they want some influence in the vampiric court they want someone to look out for their people so there we go we've got that going on now that the council reappointment is concluded we are just going to let actually no i was going to say we're going to let them do their own thing and yes we are but we need to work on the flipping potion with sarana that's where my attention is going to be. So Serana needs to get to Alchemy Station. She needs to discard this. Seriously, when my spellcasters make mac and cheese in the cauldrons. I mean, it's cute, but it's not helpful. Like any empty cauldron you leave, they will fill it up with mac and cheese. Honestly, honeys, we, we got a kitchen for a reason. This is for potions exclusively. Let's try and see if she has better luck. Maybe while she's making this potion, we can like work on some of the, we can work on the princesses and uh, their skills. So okay, let's continue experimenting. Now also, I have gone ahead and actually put in a portal on this side so that Serana can go to the magic realm because she lost her crystal, as is uh, expected of our ladies at this point. Okay, Kyra, um, where's Guinevere? Guinevere's outside. Why don't you come here, do some training with your favorite aunt slash mother figure. And okay, she doesn't need to regenerate energy, but maybe after she's done a little bit of training, she'll feel a bit better. While she's getting her training done, Juno is going to approach the queen and ask for the queen's guidance. So Juno, I don't know if I mentioned this before in the rivalry episode, but she is, she, you know, she declared previously that she's going to be an open rival for the princess. And she's actually not uh, leaving B either. 
she is trying her best to get her skills up. So at this point, the princess is a minor vampire and so is Juno. She worked really hard to catch up to the princess. She's not entirely there yet, but if Princess Kyra isn't careful, Juno is going to surpass her because she is very determined. Juno is a very, very determined princess. Kyra, where, where'd she go? Come on, come out here, do some training. Are you not? Do you not see your sister and how hard she's working? But I think the relationship between these two is going to be one of motivation. Rather than wanting to undermine each other, they're going to see each other and be motivated to try even harder. I wonder how it's going to be if you know there's a third princess in the mix. Like these two already have a bit of a dynamic going, um, and they've essentially grown up together. I wonder how it's going to be if suddenly there's a third princess, because these two are pretty serious about the throne. Um, that'll be intriguing, I think. Okay, let's go get our training done. There was something else on my mind. It's kind of escaped me at this moment. Look at Elaine, my goodness. She doesn't waste any time in coming here and mourning for Meredith, even though we all know that she probably wasn't, you know, she wasn't that attached to Meredith. Like, come on, it's Elaine. It's Elaine. But she's always making this big show of how upset she is over Meredith's death and how distraught she is. It's ridiculous, I tell you. Absolutely ridiculous. Okay, after you get this done, let's do some dark meditation. And you, you do some dark meditation too. And then I am going to, once you guys are done meditating, maybe you can meditate together. That would be cute. Yeah, so once you, nope, she's going back inside. Okay, that works too. Once you guys are done, I'm going to get Serana to call over her. Actually, I could get her to call them over now, the blood givers. Um, that way, the females, not all the females, the princesses can drink. So for their training, I really like doing the, like getting them one-on-one -on -one training with either Guinevere or the queen, doing dark meditation, and then topping it off with a drink because that kind of helps them get more power points because, you know, they're giving into their primal sides and they're using their powers a bit more. So, you done, you're done. Okay, Kyra's done as well. Let's see where these ladies are. Okay, I see one here. Grab a drink from her. And we have another one wandering around. Are they outside? Where'd they go? Okay, they're all outside. They're gonna come in slowly. They're gonna trickle on in. Oh, well, you're there. The blood giver's right there. Let's just go for her. Let's just go for her. Kyra, you're coming on inside to where this blood giver is. Come on. Have you changed? She's latching on. Yeah, Juno is like really quick. She doesn't waste any time. She's already getting her bit from this blood giver. Look at her. She's so cool though. So, so cool. Kyra's just casually wandering around. You know what I think it is, guys? You know how I said, I think an episode or two ago, that I feel Kyra's become a bit murky? I think it's because with the romance, like she was focused initially, but because of the romance she's having with Channing and probably keeping that a secret and sneaking around, I think she's become a little bit distracted from the role of being heiress. So Guinevere is, you know, constantly there reminding her, but I think she's become a bit distracted and maybe I feel that she doesn't have as much direction as Juno does anymore. I mean, hopefully she figures herself out, but I think that's what it is. Okay, once they are done with their drinks, we'll get 
Sarana to let them go and recuperate back at the prey garden. Okay. She's making strides. She's making strides, that's for sure. Okay, we need a bit more. We can't do anything with two power points right now. That is fine. Also, I do think there are tomes we can get that I haven't gotten yet. I should probably invest in some vampiric tomes. So actually, that's another thing I keep forgetting about, but that's something you can totally do. Let's get some tomes. So we'll give one to her and we'll give one to Juno. And let's let's get them to read the tomes because that is going to be helpful big time. And they've become good friends. That's actually nice to know. Huh. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Okay, she's going to read the tome over here. Kyra's going to read her tome in the dining room. And I'm also going to just call over their companions so that the youngsters can hang out with them over here. They can continue to build relationships. Any whims that I can put in before we continue? I might get Guinevere to call over the soldiers as well. Um, because some of the ladies they want to interact with, I think, Luciano. Yeah. Juno and Elaine want to interact with Luciano, so I will do that. But okay, let's dive in with Princess Juno. Because... Wait, are you still making your potion? Darn it. Hold on a second, guys. We still have that potion I need done for my um, channel member. They requested a potion. I need to give that potion to Lagatha. It's important. Okay, you come here. You keep experimenting. So she still doesn't know the potion of masterful insults. You don't, right? She, she, She's literally unlocking every potion except that one. But we need that potion. It's important. It's very important. While she does that, hopefully not getting distracted... Okay, her needs are fine. We're gonna jump into the Juno, because Juno, um, you know, she's become good friends with Kyra, she's her open rival, uh, when it comes to the title of heiress and the throne. And then she went ahead and had this interesting want. Flirt with Lord Channing. Now, we know that Channing and Kyra are secretly involved with each other. But it is a secret and nobody else knows, which means that Juno probably also doesn't know about this. Kyra hasn't told her yet, but it seems as though Juno is also attracted to Channing. Now, how will Channing react to this? Is it going to reciprocate? Is he not going to reciprocate? I don't know, but she's going to take a chance. She kind of admires him. She is going to try and flirt with him and see if if, you know, her interest is returned at all. She has no way of knowing, obviously, that um, Channing and her sister are involved. But wouldn't that be interesting if they became rivals in love as well as rivals in, um, in their title or in the fight for power? So is he going to come to her, I suppose? She's not going to go to him? I mean, that works out. That works out. Yeah, he's gonna go, or he's gonna come down, she's gonna... She probably summoned him to her. I was thinking she would go for Lord Ari, but no, she she's also going for Channing. Okay. And it seems as though... Was that a positive? I don't know, he looks a bit... Okay. He looks kind of, we like, annoyed, or maybe, like, a bit weirded out, but he accepted that... You know what it is? It's probably because, you know, the flippin' queen is here. Juno's favorite brother, the prince, is here. Juno's a flippin' princess. The entire royal family is here. So he's probably feeling a bit pressured and, like, he, he, he doesn't want to reject her and risk offending her. Like, everyone except Kyra is here, so that kind of makes sense. He's being a little bit pressured over there. It might give Juno the wrong impression, though. But now we need to find 
Luciano because Juno, interestingly enough, she's kind of moved a bit away from Elaine. She doesn't like Elaine, you know, influencing her strongly, but she has become interested in getting to know Luciano. So I suppose she wants to connect with her father a bit more because she does have that affection for her father. Uh, I mean, Luciano is the one that introduced Elaine and uh, Juno, and he only spent the amount of time he did with Juno in her youth because Elaine told him to. He's not one for kids. He never really wanted any kids. Um, and he was happy that he had a daughter so he could pass her on. But Juno still has an affection for him. So we need to find where Hecky is. Did you not invite... Hold on a second. I'll invite them again. Where is he? Where is he? Because we, like seriously, where is he? Is he not among these guys? I suppose not everyone came. Luciano! Where'd he go? I don't know where he is. <clears throat> it seems as though he thought there were better things to do than arrive. Seriously, Luciano, where'd you go? Okay, he's going to be right over. He's going to join everyone in a second. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Also, I've been noticing Xanda and Griffin hang out a lot. I wonder if they're friends. Is Griffin the one with... He's the vegetarian. Oh, Chance is a child. He needs a makeover. Okay, that makes sense. He's the vegetarian, which means I think we said he's the more tolerant one. So he doesn't like suppressing other races or even spellcasters. He feels like they're like the protectors of them. Um, intriguing, intriguing. And then his brother is the escapist sage. That's right, okay. That kind of makes sense then that he spends so much time with Xander because they grew up. Like, I don't know where Xander's grown up, but Griffin's grown up at the Glimmerbrook Embassy looking over the spellcasters with his father, and he's always felt as though they should protect the spellcasters and make them feel safe. Hmm, okay, interesting. Well, 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 well. Juno, your father is here. Let's call him over. Call over your father dearest, and then... Luciano, seriously, come on inside, please. Please? It's like, it's daytime, sunlight will be out soon, and you guys will be in trouble. Actually, Ari might also be in trouble. Okay, he's, he's inside now. So let's, let's chat with him. Let's have a deep conversation, because she wants to speak to him. So we'll do that. She wants to speak to her father. He's very sad. He's sad by what I wonder. I doubt the death of Meredith would have affected him too much. You know what it is? I think he feels, I mean, he knows. Luciano's kind of attached to Elaine. He knows that, you know, they've been working towards everything they've been doing. So that, um, I'll get to know, oh, that's nice. She wants to get to know her father. That is so sweet. She actually wants to get to know her father. That's actually really nice. She wants a bond with him. But yeah, he knows they've been working towards trying to get Elaine into the main court, into the castle. But now that she has succeeded in becoming Scholar and replacing Meredith, I think he feels a little bit left behind and a little bit sad that, you know, Catalea has replaced Elaine. Um, because it doesn't matter if Elaine moves here, he's still stuck at Castle Sheba. He can't serve her directly over here. So there is that. But this makes me happy. Look at this. She's like joking with him. She's goofing around with him. Juno is... She, she's trying with her father. She really, really does want a bond with him, which is quite nice. Okay, so that is done and dusted. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Look at how many things we have. It is a royal studies, which means the teens should probably be focusing on something, but I might do that next episode. 
but what was I? You. You. Do you have the, you still don't have the potion? Woman. Okay, she's getting really hungry, so she should probably eat, but done it. Done it. I've been trying to work on the potion, and I just haven't been able to. So I might have to continue doing that off camera. I might even have to do the Royal Studies off camera. We'll see. Just because I've been spending all my time running around and I haven't been able to get the potion ready to consume. And then we had a whole bunch of important things I couldn't miss out on. Obviously. Like the breeding. And then we had the council reappointment. We couldn't miss out on all of those things. Okay, as soon as you're done. Are you done? Are you done done? See, I don't want to interrupt her reading either, because then she's going to have problems. Okay, go use the toilet, and then continue your experimentation, because seriously, it's a wonder that you don't already have that one potion. And... Right, Kyra over here, Princess Kyra, she wanted to chat with Lady Catalea. So where is Catalea? She's up here. So let's discuss cognitive focusing methods with Lady Catalea. Why not? Why not? Let's go ahead and discuss some things with Catalea. I feel like um, our Castle Keeper is the type of sim to really ask and probe and gather knowledge as much as possible. So whoever she's talking to, she's learning a lot about their role and how things are done and probably their opinions and oh my goodness the garden has weeds the garden has weeds and it's okay Saran is coming out to work on the potions we haven't had a chance to do a whole lot of gardening with her we've been trying but it's sporadic it really is okay let's chat with Catalea but I think in the next episode we'll probably um, move the other ladies. So I think we'll keep the princesses with us. And we'll move all the other ladies back to either the Creature Cradle or Castle Eden. I mean, we could keep them with us, actually. Huh. You know what? Maybe we should keep them with us until the Queen is ready to give birth. And that's another thing that having these events has helped with. We can keep them with us until it's the day for the queen to give birth because we know when the queen is going to go into labor. So that kind of saves us from having a deleted baby because that can happen. If you have more than eight sims in a household with a pregnant sim and if that baby is born, it'll be deleted by the game. Um, but it's okay like for the pregnancy to continue or progress, it's fine to have, a, you know, more than eight sims in a household, but for the birth, you have to make space. So I'll probably go down back to five on Tuesday over here, but I might just keep everyone here and see if I can work a bit more on their whims and, you know, some of the training for these, for these princesses. But okay, guys, with that said, and what is happening? What is happening? Kyra? Is she flirting with Catalea? What is, this is not a, they're sitting together, but this is a very, not a normal sit together. That is a flirtatious sit together. I'm starting to think Kyra is a bit flirtatious. She's done that with Channing twice, so we know she's involved with Channing. We saw that in the mini movie. She's done that with Ari once. Uh, she's now done it with Catalea. Also, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I did see some, some bars with Catalea. She actually is having a bit of a romance with Elaine. That's right, guys. There's a bit of an alone, uh, geez, a bit of a romance, and it was initiated by Elaine. So I don't know what's going on there. Let me know if you guys have any opinions or theories, but that is definitely going to be an interesting relationship if it does take off between the two of them. But okay, guys, I feel like now I can put it to rest. But with that said and done, I'm going to leave off. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.